Good afternoon. My name is Lorena Rodriguez. I'm captain at Sheriff's Information Bureau. Sheriff Luna and officials will provide an update on yesterday's incident. The order of speakers will be Los Angeles County Sheriff's Department, Sheriff Robert Luna, Congress member Judy Hsu, Senator Susan Rubio, Assembly member Mike Fong, Monterey Park Mayor Henry Lowe, and in closing, Monterey Park Police Department Chief Scott Weiss. Thank you. Well, good evening to everybody, and uh, thank you all for being here and hanging in with us today. It's been a very challenging day. Uh, so let me give you what I believe will be the, the last update of the day, and then after the speakers, I'll come back up here to answer any questions that you may have. Uh, earlier uh, today, the sheriff's homicide investigators working alongside all of our law enforcement partners were able to confirm the identity of the male inside the white cargo van as the suspect in the mass shooting that we had in Monterey Park. Based on the previous information relayed by homicide investigators regarding the white van involved and seen leaving the scene of the incident in the city of Alhambra, the Torrance Police Department was notified and at 10.20 a.m., the Torrance Police, there were uh, I'm sorry, Torrance police officers located the white van matching the description near the area of Sepulveda Boulevard and Hawthorne Boulevard. As Torrance officers pulled behind the vehicle, the white van entered a shopping center parking lot. When officers exited their patrol vehicle to contact the occupant, they heard one gunshot coming from within the van. Officers retreated and requested several tactical teams to respond. Two armored vehicles responded and were able to restrict the van's movement. At 12.52 p.m., our sheriff's uh, SWAT team approached and cleared the van and determined the suspect sustained a self-inflicted gunshot wound and was pronounced dead at the scene. Investigators conducted a search of the vehicle and determined the male inside the van was the mass shooting suspect. During the search, several pieces of evidence were found inside the van linking the suspect to both locations in, Al in uh, Monterey Park in Alhambra. In addition, a handgun was discovered inside the van. The suspect has been identified as who, as who can tran. And the way that's spelled is H-U-U, -U, middle name C-A-N, last name T-R-A-N. He is a 72-year-old male Asian. I can confirm that there are no outstanding suspects from the mass shooting incident that occurred in the city of Monterey Park. And although uh, that closes a portion of a very long day for all of us, the investigation is still ongoing. Sheriff's homicide detectives are working around the clock, gathering additional information and working on determining the motive behind this extremely tragic event. I would like to thank Chief Weiss and the Monterey Park Police, De I'm sorry, Monterey Park Police Department, the Federal Bureau of Investigation, the Alcohol, Tobacco and Firearms, California Governor's Office of Emergency Services, the United States Department of Justice, the Torrance Police Department, the District Attorney's Office, Supervisor Hilda Solis, who has been here with us uh, for the previous um, pressers, and the surrounding South Bay law enforcement agencies. Initially, we are giving thanks to the Monterey Park Fire Department for their life-saving measures. Uh, I was informed before coming out here, we still have seven people, seven victims who are hospitalized. Uh, and I'm sure that 
the work of our firefighters and police officers contributed uh, to saving at least those lives. Um, as I stand up here, um, I, I'm very proud, really, of all of us, the community, all of you in the media. Um, I could say we did this together. We really did. And turn it over to the next speaker. Um, I, when I got here and I saw, and I told you this morning, the look in the eyes of the homicide investigators and all of their staff, you could just tell they were going to get this guy. Uh, and although I couldn't talk in detail about that earlier today, I'm, I'm very proud of Captain Andy Meyer and the whole entire Homicide Bureau who not only got us to this point, but there's a lot of work and investigation uh, to be done. Um, and just real quick before I turn it over to the, the next um, speaker, uh, you've been asking me about motive. We still are not clear on the motive. Uh, the investigation continues, and that is something we are all extremely, uh, we want to know. We want to know how something like this, something this awful can happen. Also in regards to the weapons, uh, there was a handgun, as I described, that was discovered in the van with the suspect. Uh, the weapon that was recovered from the Alhambra location, in which, remember, the suspect went to the Alhambra location uh, after he conducted the shooting and he was disarmed uh, by two community members who I consider to be heroes because they saved lives. This could have been much worse. Uh, the weapon that we recovered at that second scene I'm describing as a magazine-fed semi-automatic assault pistol, not an assault rifle but an assault pistol that had an extended large capacity magazine uh, attached to it. Um, and uh, that's the pistol that was recovered at the location in Alhambra. So with that, uh, I'll come back up for questions after the rest of our partners behind me speak. So I'll turn that now over to the next speaker. Thank you. I'm Congressmember Judy Chu, and I represent Monterey Park. I want to give my enormous thanks and gratitude to law enforcement for finding this shooter. It should not go to any events because there was an active shooter. But law enforcement came out, and they were able to find the shooter with not even 24 hours passing. So I, Sheriff Luna, please, a big round of applause. I want to thank our Monterey Park Police Department and Police Chief Scott Weiss for keeping us safe in this community. I want to thank the Torrance Police Department for identifying the suspect and ultimately making sure level to the local level, uh, our local city council, which has been amazing, but also I got calls today from the white, all expressed concerns and offered. I still have questions in my mind, which is what was the motive for this shooter? Did he have a mental illness? Was he a domestic violence abuser? How did he get these guns? And was it through legal means or not? Well, those questions will have to be answered in the future. But what I want to do here is to say to the community, feel safe. You are no longer in danger. I've lived in this city for 37 years, and I was mayor and city council member. What I saw today and what I see at this moment is indeed we are resilient and we are stronger together. I represent the city of Monterey Park, and I want to start by offering condolences. I want to also commend those two individuals that have those two individuals, and we hope to honor them at some point in the near future. And everyone that did what needed to be done to ensure that we bring safe, safe community. So thank you to all those that were working. Continue to condemn any type of violence. It has no place in our communities. 
I want to also praise first responders for their quick action and those at our local hospital taking care of the victims. So please, I ask all of you also to take a moment to think of the teachers. I was a teach children that were coming into my classrooms and it was my job to say thank you to your teachers because they're gonna have to deal with this tragedy. It's not uneasy, scared, unsure, so please support our local teachers. They have a, they've been tremendously proactive in trying to ensure that our community feels safe, that this city has what it needs in terms of resources for the trauma of all the families that are now left behind dealing with such devastation. And so to all the community that was here earlier, uh, praying for all the victims, and let's continue to pray. We're here to support. And one last thing I wanna share that early on, um, the support. And so I wanna thank all my colleagues, the governor, Lieutenant Governor Eleni Kulinakis, and everyone who called and offered prayers and support. And we will put all the resources necessary to make sure that our community knows that they're gonna be taken care of. Thank you. Good evening. I am Assembly Member Mike Fong, representing the 49th Assembly District. Thank you so much to Sheriff Luna, Chief Weiss, and the, all the local law enforcement and state and federal partners for their leadership and efforts in finding the shooter. During the time of celebration, during the annual Lunar Year, when families gather today, together, we know that our community has faced a tragic incident. So shocking, sad, and horrible. For those seeking assistance and trauma relief, please visit the Langley Center here in the city of Monterey Park. Thank you to Mayor Lowe and the Monterey Park City Council for their leadership and efforts. And thank you to the governor and the Office of Emergency Services for their leadership and efforts in coordinating emergency response and for enhancing security here in Monterey Park and the San Gabriel Valley communities. This has been a very challenging time. As you heard from our Congresswoman, our Senator, Monterey Park is strong. Monterey Park is resilient. And together, we will get through these challenging times together. At this time, I'd like to introduce Monterey Park Mayor Henry Lowe. Thank you very much, Assembly Member. You know, I want to thank Sheriff Luna and your department for helping us seek justice today in the tragedy that has occurred. I want to thank our own Monterey Park Police Department, many of whom are officers, for your dedication in making sure that the justice was brought forward. I want to thank our Fire Chief Matt Halleck and the personnel of the Fire Department who rushed to investigate this horrific event, we, we are able to, to say that, that justice has been done uh, thanks to everyone working together. But we also know that this is just the beginning, and the Lunar New Year, and a time when people come together for, uh, to spend time with families, with friends, and that was the purpose of those who gathered at the dance hall last night. But tragically, Someone decided to, you know, to express violence, and violence has no place in our society. And so at this moment, uh, the community, you know, moving forward, you know, our, our priority is to make sure that those victims, their uh, fa family members, are given the assistance they need to heal and to get over this trauma. And as a community, it's also the, the moment in which we will need to move forward in the long process of healing of the community, able to, because as you've heard from the comments, and again, I thank everyone from Chief Luna to our Congressman Judy Chu, our the county, uh, our friends in neighboring cities, the region, to my friends, to our, to my, our residents of Monterey Park. Some of the highest rates of uh, vaccination and some of the lowest rates of veterans post create a food bank. We had people who, who are that is diverse, that has welcome waves of, to live here in Monterey Park. And I have confidence, I have confidence that we will, we will get over this crisis because we must. And we, can, we will only do so if we do it together as a community because remember, we are all in this together. And again, I, I just have to reiterate just the admiration we have for and immediately activated, um, you know, it's 
pr procedures to also tap into. And we do have a long road ahead of us, but I hope, I hope that all of you who are how we can help Monterey Park, we know the, the road is just, the journey is just beginning. And uh, we hope that we will continue to be on this road together to heal and to ultimately triumph over evil and adversity. Thank you, everybody. Tonight's the Lunar New Year. And we would be celebrating that tonight, but obviously we can't. The officers that were here last night are just coming back on duty right now. They're upstairs in briefing. When I get done talking to you here, I'll go back upstairs and make sure that my officers are mindful to protect this community as if they're mentally prepared to do so. So that's where I'll be going after this. I want to thank Sheriff Luna and the partnerships with the Sheriff's Department and all of our federal, state, and local partners. We couldn't have done this without their help. I want to thank uh, the Torrance Police Department for being the police department here in Monterey Park. We'll be present, every continue to do that into the future. I'd like to open it up for any questions. When we got to the van, it did have different plates. So uh, I'm assuming uh, they were stolen. They weren't the plates that belong on the van. Again, part of our partnerships with all of our agencies and uh, some of the process we use to catch a very dangerous person and get them off the streets. Sure, you talked earlier about the, uh, that you don't have a motive right now. I want to ask you something that could play a role in that. Is there any indication that the... We're still looking into that. That's part of what the homicide detectives are investigating. Uh, please keep in mind that, uh, especially with the deceased victims, uh, the coroner's office uh, retrieved to answer a lot of questions that all of us have. Gun violence needs to stop. There's too much of it. Uh, we're all standing here tonight because uh, an individual uh, took a weapon and did the damage that we've talked about without I think we really need to go back and look at so let's look at across our nation see what works and what doesn't but I could tell you this the status quo is not working so we need to re-examine uh, what we're doing and what may work better and I hope that this tragedy doesn't just go on a long list of many others that we don't even talk about until the next one comes up. We're still in the process of identifying all the victims. We will have that information as the days go on. I, okay. I heard something on my right ear that sounded like the ages of the victims. Um, the, the ages of the victims that we dealt with here uh, in Monterey Park, um, I don't have the specific ages because they have not been identified, uh, but they're, they're not in their 20s or 30s. They seem to be uh, probably, I would say, in their 50s, 60s, and maybe some even beyond there. So. Uh, and again, um, give me a second. Um, anyways, yes, ma'am? Uh, have the next of kin or the victims been contacted yet, sir? We're still in the process of doing that. And you have any reports of the criminal history of the suspects? Have any restraining orders? Was there a history of any sort of criminal activity with Mr. Grant prior to the Yes, ma'am. Yes, That's something we're still looking at. We're looking at all criminal history, mental health history, and th those are all things the detectives will take a very hard, long look at and see if it impacted uh, what occurred here, the motive, and that's part of the learning lessons and sharing them with our partners and seeing if there's any, any, any gaps that were there that we may have missed. Uh, to my knowledge, there was no officer or deputy involved shooting at the scene. Sheriff, was there anything else in the van itself that you found beyond the handgun, like any ammunition, anything like that? And do you know what his city of residence is, this, uh, this suspect? 
uh, yes to all the above, but it's none of those I can get into at this point. I've got, uh, we have detectives uh, all over the region continuously working very hard uh, to answer a lot of the very good questions you're asking regarding motive and all these other things. And uh, the timing isn't right for me to put that out. We will, uh, but give us several more hours. We're taking this one step at a time. I didn't hear the first part of that, but uh, the, the suspect responsible for this tragedy is no longer with us. That was the person that uh, is deceased now, and you're asking me if we feel we're safe, he's the one responsible for this. He is no longer a threat. Give, give me a second. I'm getting multiple questions at the same time. I hear something about guns. There's uh, one gun was seized and one found in the van. Was there a multiple gun was suspect was carrying? We don't know yet. Well, if you let the, the second location tipped off by the first location, that led you to contact Torrance Police specifically, that he would be in their area. Was, that, what, was there a nexus between what happened here, what you knew about, you thought your suspect, and Torrance? Does he have a connection to Torrance, sir? This morning, when I talked about the information we had, uh, we put out as much information as we possibly can while there was a lot of very good investigative and detective work going on. Um, something we don't talk about much in Southern California is our extraordinary ability to communicate and coordinate with each other. Uh, not only the Los Angeles County Sheriff's Department, you see the partnership here between ourselves, the Monterey Park Police Department, uh, my partner at the Torrance Police Department. We put this information out. Uh, we're very good with our networks, uh, and this is, and it showed how it worked. You communicate this, officers are out on the lookout. Uh, they want to, I, I don't care if you work in Torrance, Long Beach, Monterey Park, you name the city, something like this happens. There's everybody who wears a badge wants that person in custody, and I think that's what you see happening uh, today. Uh, it's, uh, teamwork uh, that's going on out there. There's going to be more information that we'll be putting out about the specifics, but right now I'm here to report that the suspect responsible for this tragedy is no longer a threat. We're still interviewing witnesses. We're interviewing witnesses at the Monterey Park location. We're interviewing witnesses at the Alhambra location and all of it will come together when, I'm gonna use, it sounds weird for me to say some of this makes sense. Putting it all together and trying to figure it all out. We're still in the process of uh, doing all that. It's gonna take some days. Give me a second. Uh, let me give somebody else a chance over here. I believe the weapon that was recovered at the Alhambra location is not legal to have here in the state of California. Uh, we'll do more research on it. Our partners uh, at the ATF, and by the way, I was mentioning different police departments. Uh, we can't be su as successful as we are without, uh, the FBI's been with us all day. Uh, the ATF joined in. Uh, the U.S. Marshals has been helping us. Uh, I get a, a personal call from the Attorney General earlier saying, what can we do to help you? I've been in communication with the governor um, who you may see out here in the, in the very near future. Uh, everybody just, what can we do to help? So everybody was pitching in. I can tell you that the suspect walked in there 
probably with the intent to kill more people, uh, and two brave uh, community members decided they were going to jump into action and disarm him. They did so, uh, took possession of the weapon, and the suspect ran away. Were they tipped off? That's an important follow-up, Sheriff. Were they tipped off about okay. the incident at the first location? You're asking that second part of the question over here. We heard that they, that they might have been tipped off, that the shooting happened, that somebody might be coming to their dance studio. Have you heard anything? I have not heard that, but that's possible. Uh, our deputies, actually the, the, pol the brave police officers from the Monterey Park Police Department are the first responders to the initial scene. Um, I don't know if the, uh, if the chief has more information on that, uh, that he can um, ask about or answer, I should say. Can answer. Yes. The first officers on scene were one of uh, some of my youngest officers. They'd only been on the street for a very short period of time. When they came into the parking lot, it was chaos. There were wounded people. There were people trying to flee out all the doors. Uh, they immediately went into action. And within just a couple minutes, those officers had entered the location looking for the suspect. That's our protocols here. We don't wait. Inside, they came across a scene that none of them had been prepared for. So there were injured people inside, there were dead people inside, and my young officers did their job, searched for a suspect, and then came back and had to deal with the carnage that was inside. And it was, it was extensive. Um, that's one of the reasons I need to make sure that they're okay. Uh, between the time of call and the first officer on scene was less than three minutes. How long have they been officers? Um, the youngest ones have only been out on their own in training for the last several months. Okay, hold on. I, I got a gentleman up here asking questions and someone's talking over him. I, I, can you repeat that, please? We will, but not tonight. We'll get there. We'll get there. All the excellent questions, and uh, we will get there. So, not tonight, because we're still in the process of following up, serving search warrants. We want to get to the motive. We want to know what the heck happened here. The only way we're going to get there is through a lot of very hard detective work, and we plan on doing just that. So thank you very much. Thank you for uh, all of your support today. Uh, couldn't have done this without you. Thank you very much.